Welcome to Onivia, League of Legends Highlights. These are the best highlights from today's LCK matchup. And here we go already. The slow is happening here to Zeus. And we got Karia and Owner and Tuma Level one? all coming in. There's the slam into the wall. Perfect's in a bit of trouble. And he doesn't have flash. He's going to go down to the six already. T1. Not sure if that was a bait or what, but Perfect absolutely overchases and gets punished. And what? speaking of which, we are just going to face check and die. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know what they're doing, but Guma has two kills oh, now. Oh, you don't want to a tilt. And the fact that out of the, I imagine, what, like 10, 12 CS that he could have gotten, he's only gone four. That's not good. Yeah, nice little angle here onto the Senna. Barrel almost definitely going to have to flash. Doesn't even bother. He's just going to take the death and die. So the big thing with the Senna is if your team is sort of even. Oh. Yeah, Barrel's in a rough spot here. He does have his flash. He will flash that one. Here comes BDD, who's just going to be swept away. And he is super low Barrel as well. A big bop coming over the top, but I think they have the chase potential. One more auto would do it. Baker will get the kill. They have gone very deep for this, though. Ascaria trying, thinking about helping out. He's not level 6 yet. As now Pioshik not going to hit anything. Doesn't a flash. And there's a disengage cone right here. So KT just had to back away. It's just and a... And you're into plenty of picks that scale exceptionally well. On top of that, you know, the center, we talk about the value this pick can have. But if you're behind, people will just die. Like, you won't get a chance to sustain the mob when a Zig's ult and Q is just deleting them from the map. Especially uh, it's definitely looking a bit difficult. And now Death chunked out here. Oh. Wow. Again, doesn't have the blood. Yeah, there's Karia, and he just swings by, hits someone, drops the ignite, and gets the kill. And Death doesn't. I don't think the ult even hit him. I yeah, think ignite buckler. I think he just autoed once and ignited. And that was it. I mean, Death doesn't exist right now. Zeus, does he exist is the question. He's still got a flash. Meanwhile, there's a fight going on between the supports, and Karia's winning that one big time. Can he actually get the kill? Oh. Yes, he can. And now he's on the run here, might be in a bit of trouble, especially with the TP coming in, but Perfect basically just TPs for nothing, and they eventually kill Karia, while Faker is basically just plopping it on the heads of every enemy that's in his range, and nobody gets to play the game against his fed Ziggs. Meanwhile, Barrel, well, he's in the game, but he's not really, as he's dead again for the fourth time at 13 minutes. And there's the Satchel coming in, maybe asleep here. There's the Flash as well. He does have teammates nearby, but not quite close enough as Guma finally does get punished. And now Oder will go down as well. And finally, KT gets something on the map. Great bait by Barrel there. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <A lot> Classic <laughs> Barrel. <laughs> a lot of resources bid by T1. A bit of an overcommit. I was, oh, more happening. Yeah, Karia's just kind of getting in there, and this is actually an, a bait because the TP's here, Faker's here as well, Dev is just dead, and now Faker gets the scoop here on a Pioshik. Nice Senna ult to help out, and BDD is Condem. desperate, but the Condemn comes in, and the knock into the wall! It's exactly what you were talking about, you're just up against the wall forever, and now the Vayne is going way too deep for this, actually, oh. and will get punished. BDD will oh. serve. The healing there means that BDD doesn't die. Oh is that enough? Here we go I again. I don't think so. Owner gonna miss his ult. Also one for the Zeeks here. Pretty common on Skarner, I guess. One of the only junglers as a tank in the jungle to actually still get that item. Uh, Faker is gonna take out a turret. And this now, is the second. Do you want to have already taken all of the outer towers? It's 16 minutes, and it's so easy for them just to look and threaten these tier twos. That's one down already. And they can just repeat yeah, it's not Don't just, uh, let Zayas pick Vayne. It's not just perfect. I think Death and Barrel have also definitely struggled. But I do think a lot of the effects follow oh, as Very BD. nice knock up here. BDE, man, this is one way you can still win the game as... Oh, oh the Annihil from Karyo is insane. It's still going to be a kill, but now they're in a bit of trouble. As so many low health bars. We got the TP coming in. Nice stasis from the side of Pyoshi. And Barrel is burning down a bit. But nobody has actually died yet. Oh, Kuma um, just uses W aggressively. Cassante. Yeah, here comes the Cassante. It is 4v5 for now. TP available, though. His owner just trying to get away. It doesn't look like they want to fight this one just yet. They have the Azir turret. And Perfect is walking over every single mine that he can find. And yeah, they're just able to disengage. KT doesn't have the best engage at the end of the yeah. day anyway. Also, Perfect, he's got the Frozen Fist and now going towards more armor. But Vayne does true damage and yeah. Fake and Guma do magic damage. 
nowadays as Guma is just really not missing anything. It, it really is night and day as well when you compare Guma's individual ticket performance to when, the, when we were at the start of the playoffs, right? And given how important of a pick it is on the patch, that shouldn't come as a surprise, but it definitely is a really big reason of why oh, this... Uh, just Guma ult. I think Barrel might die to that, but I hope we get to see it for science, obviously. Yeah, by the way, they still have the Rift Herald, so they just saved it until 23 minutes, and now they're using it to push down the mid wave and the mid lane and try to really get into the surge. Baker going 1v1 against BDD, who eventually does have to rebind, but the rest of T1 are just pushing mid, and this is with Bally. Yep. Yeah. Start it up, why not? And I mean, their Baron damage is just disgusting with the Vayne, with the Azir, with the Ziggs, who isn't even hitting it. He's just zoning uh, Yosik away. That is two abilities, I guess three. Um, just gonna be thrown in a perfect like I'm here, guys, I'm ready to help. And the Baron's but, uh, gone. They, they adapted pretty they well. They pivoted really yeah. well. <laughs> it's actually very impressive. Well, TP behind. Uh, <laughs> Hill Mary. BDD is he's still trying. He's still trying his best. But now he doesn't have a health bar. And with Baron buff, this is just even more oppressive because your siege is already fantastic with just the one guy. And you know you have some healing. You have some ability to <laughs> yeah. But not really. Well, he's not, got not ten thousand gold behind. He's got ult again with the slow hit from. I think if the slow hits from Ona on Barrel, they can just ult. Yeah. Force a flash. It's so funny because Barrel is actually healing, but it just doesn't matter. Even the loot and sprog. Oh no! Oh, Barrel. Barrel. Oh no! And the ult, you know, optimistic, but they do get the heal, and I, I guess that's something. They already got two inhibitor uh, inhibitors, rather, and they're going for number three. And here we go, the Impale comes in, gets double flash away from them, just burning, just eating the summoners as they're trying to get on top of Zeus, and they might just do that, but who cares about Zeus when Gooba is this bed on the Ziggs? And you got the one carry, but you didn't get the other two. BDD desperate to try to take something down, but guys, this game is over, and it is out as T1 are looking to take down game number one in flying fashion here in this finals of the regional qualifiers. It's one last ditch attempt from Def, but this one is done, so 26 and a half minutes, and game one. He has a good game if he gets ahead. A lot of the targets just aren't be able to get a cut through his sustain, and then the bard. See if he can do so. Piosik, yeah, he's just level three. He's coming in behind Faker, as they do know that the Skarner is here, and now Faker gonna be knocked towards the wall. He does dodge the knockup here. He goes for the ghost, but he's basically just running in circles, waiting for Owner to come on over, who is going to bail him out. But now a bit of damage into Owner as well. The Unbind comes in and forces the flash from Owner. The flash on him for BDD, and he gets first blood just like that. And this is the bleed out. Oh, that's what ends up oh, yeah. being the main up, issue. Because as we can see, uh -huh. initial setup here, not finding the Q3 and not finding the wall slam. Keep going. It's just not bye, enough. Bye, 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 bye. And Go for Vi. The fact that Owner, I think, uh, could have flashed a lot earlier uh, here and, and denied a lot of the star on damage. Got him. Could have probably kept him alive. I'm just questioning because surely they knew that Kyoshik was there. I think Faker should have just. I know. Yeah. A little bit of a trap. I mean, Barrel's here as well and could try to go for it though. The flash on in the Ornhorn going to be blown here as well. Perfect. Not even bothering to flash and it's going to bite him back as that is the kill. Owner comes in and just way too much. Less impactful souls still on the map. We'll see which rift we are going to get. And it's wow. loud, which. There's a lot of members that I think use the Cloud Rift really well here on either side. Yeah, I honestly don't think Cloud is that bad. Obviously, something like a Hex deck is the ideal, but particularly the Nasus benefits a lot from that movement speed at close distance. Trying to clear the wave here. He's got Caria to just stasis everything up there, and this is an R, and as the Impale will come in, but the stun is there from Caria and the knockup from the R, but Death, he lives just barely and eventually does go down to Caria's auto. Barrel as well is going to bite the dust eventually as Faker comes in, just collects a kill. Or something on Faker again. I think this Nasus is very, very weak, but already reinforcements on the way here for T1. Yeah, and I mean, the setup here from the side of T1, especially because Toshik is just uh, that he's just alone dead. farming in the jungle. I mean, he's Skarner, he can go through walls. Surely he's, no, he's, he's dead. Yeah, he's gone through walls towards T1's <laughs> base. <laughs> yeah, only question is who gets the kill. It will be the buy. Just that gold pretty well, as you mentioned before, Chronicler. And uh, 
on the yeah. space. Zayus on the flank, has his ultimate available. It's about to get very interesting. Let's see, BDD looking for the knockup, and now the Ornhorn's gonna be called. Nice little angle, but a big engage from Barrel into the Equalizer, oh! and Impale! It's just a massive wobble that comes in. T1 are trying to turn something. They do get the one kill, and a massive Bartolt as well. But at the end of the day, do they have to follow up damage to kill any of these low health members is the question. Guva trying his best to do exactly that, but he can't get the one kill. Carry is gonna go down, and BDE is still alive. And it's Guva, you see your bus, but he is gone as KT winning. BDE can cancel Fakers, right? So if BDE decides to teleport in, there isn't really a whole lot that Faker can do besides try to damage him as much as possible, as Barrel does not care about your measly turret, they will just slam this End down. giving over soul point if they don't move quickly. It's already half HP. It is a Skarner can get over walls though. They're gonna get the ults from Karia in there, and yeah, the Skarner goes in, and That's it good. just goes over to Pyoshik, and they do have this magical journey. Barrel trying to follow, but he just says, no, it's not worth it, we got the Drake. Back thing coming into the day. As a reminder, there is no more LCK after this. This is the final fight between these two teams. Whoever wins this best of five goes to Worlds. For the loser, it's over as BDD is going deep. Yeah, just doing the only things, and the, the Ziggs does not very much like that or appreciate. He didn't hit so much. Yeah. I, just saying, I, I, I have to go in. 95. Oh. There, and obviously a lot of damage don't coming in, the Equalizer being dropped. Don't, don't go laser. too far. Like oh. Guma, or owner in the long run is going to be something that KT can rely on to type set up for these dives, right? Like one or two Ws alone could be enough as... Uh, okay, that is a big committal, but it's what? a carry all to deny all the damage! And now T1 are perfectly set up for the Wombo combo once again! Equalizer comes down, it's a perfect angle from perfect, and T1 are burnt to a crisp as KT will win the fight and will take the Baron. The anti synergy They now have enough damage just between BD and Death that the CC combo of Barrel and Pioshik ends up being absolutely huge. And of course, T1 heavily over investing is not going to get in, but they get the turret and that's the main goal. Yeah. I mean, with the Baron just trying to really escalate your gold lead and now trying to flash on a guy who's invisible and owner has to go in. Bit of damage, the Ziggs ult over the top and they finally do get perfect. It's a trade one for one, but Faker is probably going to go down. This is a pretty decent Bartle, but it's only going to delay the inevitable as Faker, super low, he's in the back line, gets ulted on, down he will go. It's a triple for Depth, who's just running around the fight. KT were just warming up in game one. We saw in this series against BNK Firex yesterday that game one was a slow one, not the best performance, but they have ramped up and they are here to contest for that world spot. Stealth means that there isn't an opportunity for owner. And yeah, eventually they get the turn on the perfect, uh -oh. but. Well, this is just insult to injury. Guma doesn't have flash, and I think eventually he should die. There you go. Pioche is just going to bop him on the head with a claw. And uh, it's just a caught six. Trying to satchel over a wall. Get too much progress with just that wave. And over the last couple of years, it's important to note as well that now that the Kai'Sa is online, uh, he is getting bonked on the head. Yeah, Death just is in melee range against a big Nasus who isn't very fed. But actually, it's just a bait all along. The Spaker's running the other way. There's a Bard ult. Spaker's like, I need more stacks. Hold on. Um, not the best timing there, and now this fight is very broken up. That's a double impale, and both these guys are just dead. As is just caught in the crossfire, he's going to be going down as well. KT is crossing their eyes, crossing their T's, dotting their eyes, rather. This Faker is still just holding the wave, trying to keep the game alive. He's just building stacks, right? It's what Nasus does. <laughs> <laughs> still farming. <laughs> yeah, I eventually I he'll get there. Barrel is going to win this 1v1. Unfortunately, BDD on the way as well. I mean, I guess he held the wave, but... Yeah, BDD even QSS is the wither, so... Uh, he just didn't hit a Q at some point. He's dodge everything! Nah, he's... Yeah, this is... He's trying his best. I mean, the Nasus can be pretty funky like this. The ult will be committed to, as BDD has had enough. And uh, they do take him down. Yeah, surprise Scorp can showing up at the, the end. He was the only one in game one, so... Now he's got a team behind him, and KT... 10,000 gold ahead almost are looking for their second Baron. All they got to do is turn. Just don't flip, don't risk giving it over. As long as owner isn't allowed near the pit, does it flash an ult? 
Well, they're trying to keep him out of the pit, and there is the turn. A lot of Wombo Combo Bouncy Castle behind the wall Yoda there. Is dead. Yeah, BDD goes down, and Baker's pretty tanky of being impaled, but Piotrzyk getting low. I think the wall, it's might just be a bit too heavy, though. A pretty decent fight, all things considered, but the wallets are there for the side of KT. Extremely messy, and C1 will deny the Baron for now. It's not clean, but it's KT. Everything's fine. They oh, have oh. enough threats. For damage avoidance well, from them. You think of a BDD stepping out up the... Oh, oh okay. The Zanya is going to have some big value there as BDD finds Guma, and you see the Orn is desperate to try to save him, but he will go down anyway, and BDD will survive. The wallets are just gigantic right now on the side of KT. They take down the two carries, and that might just do it. KT Rolster looking for their first win in the series. Say is desperate to just try to stop the wave from going down, but the TP will come in. And it's only Caria as step one kill away from Legendary, I believe, here, as they will look to push to end and win game two. And this best of five after game one looked a little dicey, but KT bounced back in a big way. And the Telecom War continues for this final world spot as the Nexus falls during game number two. The Nexus will fall, and we do, in fact... To be enough, it looks like instead a Sivir... We saw Guma pull out as here for the Grubs. And Keita Rolster with the Ivern are utilizing that zone control very well. But in goes Beryl. He says, enough of the zone control. I'm just going to put my face in it. And he does do that, and he's probably dead as the knockup comes in. He gets a shield, though. Stays alive for a very long period of time, but eventually does go down. First blood goes to Faker. And all going to be thrown out here by Guma, who is level 6. Desperately need his Guma. Does have his flash, low on mana, and doesn't have his satchel. Yeah, he just used it for poke. Um, here comes Deft, trying to come in, gets the Q down. Guma will flash away, some mines on the ground, but one Q could do it, or just an auto, as Deft is just going to take... numbers as much as something like a Siva or a Tristano, or even a lot of your traditional AD carries. Just get it for your Siva and your Jax as well in that Supreme late game. Definitely going to want that with some That's side lane threats be. as here we go. Going to try to come in here. The knockup comes in. There's that TP you guys are talking about. And now Faker in a really rough spot. He's going to get Bartle to, but there's really nobody to save him as Barrel takes a bit of damage, but will survive with the help of the Ivern. And this is the exact fight. the shields from Ivern. You know, we see Leona being one of these supports who feels so tanky in the front line, but it's emphasized Next so much tech. more. Oh. Oh. This is with Caria here, it's just not really going to happen, and KT will call that off as well. So, I'm just going to take this bot turret. Yep, good angle found there. Perfect moving over to cover, but a lot of poke coming down on a KT. They do have a redemption to kind of mitigate all the poke just before the fight. But uh, you can see Death about half HP already now. Just waiting for the engage from the side of T1. There it is. They're going to throw it straight into Piochik. They know he doesn't have it, but he has actually a stop on and he will be going down. That's a kill already on the death as Zeus just got in and murdered him as that is three to the side of T1. Always oh, followed. Remember, in Piochik, who doesn't have the flash from that earlier play, turned that into a satchel mid, and now T1 starting up with the six souls. Yeah, I was like, uh, again, I, I got baited like Wolf in a lot of trouble. Did he not get the blue buff? He you got know, the blue buff. mission yep. successful. Didn't even be in flash for it. It's telling though that like this dragon is, is just going to go over to T1. They're going to get the inner. Yeah. I don't think KT is going to be in a position to contest. But KT got the objective bounty. Yeah, that is that is very true, Valdez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really T1 getting the most value. They won that team fight. They knew they could go Baron immediately. Getting the value from the Baron, taking so much in terms of structures. And the Baron, actually. And now the Dragon, and now all the turrets. It really was kind of on a knife's edge in this one. T1 were ahead. 15 seconds on uh, the Baron. So basically one wave to try and crash in and get this, and they'll use the wall to do so. Uh, the ult's going to be thrown towards Leona. Beryl just says, okay, I'm going in, and he's dead. Uh, now we're going to have people trying to get close, and that's the issue with the Sivir. He's able to stop some, but he has to get so close to the fire. And T1 so far ahead at this point, and now with both Deft and Barrel gone, looks like T1 are looking to take an even bigger chunk out of this game three. Not a lot to be done here. Zayus just able to hook shot with impunity. I say that. Got the ultimate. I mean, he's just going to use it here on the Jax. He's just frontlining. He just, even if he went down, this is a good trade. And he's still alive, still getting hook shots in, still getting stunts down. 
And T1 just biting off the even. The treads on the cool uh, Yeah. Is, yeah, how could you forget the Merc tread? Oh, uh, perhaps the Merc key. Little engage here from Barrel, but at the end of the day, he uses his satchel defensively, and Barrel's dead. And the timing this time with the Bard is fantastic, as Death will actually run away. Caria getting pretty close to the sun, and now it's Zeus who does take that magical journey in and is looking to end this game. I see one a little bit low on the health bars, but there's the knock up, the stun onto Perfect. He's got a flash away. Zeus is not going to let them get away at this point in time. Death's desperate to try to do something, but he will be taken down. And so will BDD. So those two short ring carries will be taken out of the game, and T1 will look to end it. And the imminent end, possibly to the last dance, can be felt as this third next is going to fall. T1 going to go up to match point. Not a guaranteed win for them. I still think this game is. Oh. The there, Braum. He found it. Found it in the end. But I think if the he doesn't get help, I don't know if he's going to be able to survive through this. Let's see if he, he, he's right next to Faker. He cannot TP in here. And there's a lot of damage already in a perfect. As owner tanks it up, he flashes away. Deosik makes Even his way into a, a, a fairly oppressive bot side. If you are that scared to take the two of Yoshik sitting here as well. Yeah, it's Guma and Karia. Guma does have an arrow, and the door will be held. The cleanse comes through, but Guma's in a lot of trouble. Barrel getting under that uh, tower, though. Takes a ton of damage. Does not matter. They bring everybody in here. But now the follow-up from T1. They get the kill onto the tree. And now they're going to get the flash out of Barrel as well. So at the end of the day, to clear the wave and not get do here. Possible dive. We do have owner on the opposite end of the map. And Perry has always been in the right spot to deal with this, as in the 1v1, Guma says, okay, I'm just going to get a cleanse, gathers it here. So knockup is going to miss, and BD doesn't do much, but the knockaway of Caria is a big one, but the Counter-Strike catches all three! And Barrel gets so incredibly low, and now we got a TP coming in. Pilshik has to flash away. And that dive did not work out the way that... It's a good one. Amtek? What's it going to be? It's Cloud. Oh, what happened there? Yeah, well, we all know what happened there. That's why Pioshik has that skin. As uh, bot lane turret is going to get taken with Pioshik charging onward. And, I mean, they're setting up for another one. Carry is not even that healthy, but, yeah. Not going to not gonna overstay their welcome. Perfect! Okay, he's making a play in mid, and Guma has flash, but he says, well, I'm not going to get out of here. Nearly kills Devs, but it's still a fair... Yeah, a good setup from Perfect. Kind of reminiscent. Does everyone remember? Oh. More action coming. Well, this is Barrel kind of alone. Not the first time we've seen this. And Owner just able to maybe get revenge. No, Barrel just flashing and Nimbus cloaking and trying to get out of here. But Karia says no. It's not. really hard again to engage on these members of T1. Unless you can just knock someone down. Zeus is going to be spotted here. T1, uh, that's the engage roll. Yeah, the engage Braum coming on in, and it's owner who is very tanky that they engage on. The impale not going to hit anything. The cast is excellent. The down will go carry on. And owner is left alone as well. KT Roaster pick up two, but now T1 trying to get something. BDD will have to flash away. Oh, he gets over the wall with the Q3. And now he's totally saved. KT are not done yet. Oh, the health bars are low. Oh, boy. He Uba. is on fire on this pick. All right, we, we... I know that they lost one game with it, but I think we have the right idea when we ban BDDs. On the table, we can see teams starting to set up and maybe look for some picks to set up for it. The damage is there to take down a Baron of the uh, They're oh. trying to get in here, and they're just lining up for the Yone once again. Zeus getting pretty low, but he is Jax, and they're engaging onto Jax uh, Braum. That's not the best. Owner trying to get in with the Impale, but Faker gets cast into the team and left alone, and he should be going down. There he goes. Perfect trying to follow up, but he already did his job. And the minions again favoring KT as he doesn't get the body slam. It's better that he goes for it than that he sits back and does nothing, right? Uh, I guess. He's calibrating. Yeah, uh, he's getting ready for the next one. And now we got a fight breaking up for some reason, or breaking out. As owner tries to impale, isn't going to get anyone. Faker just trying to run into That's Barrel. Garner. And uh, Guma trying to do damage to Deft as actually Zeus has a very good angle. Three man stun comes in, and Zeus will get the kill, but down will go Faker. Owner is so low, but T1, they are kiting this one out in a very scrappy fight. As the Ash and the Jax are going to have big value here. BDD not really finding his angle personally. And T1 kind of 
settling down here. Barrel. Oh, secret Agent Barrel. He can, uh, yeah, uh, I mean. It's Barrel. This Perry will chase him, that doesn't matter. T1 are gonna get the Cloud Drake. Yep, we'll get them up to that third, and honestly, I think to me, the standout was Zayas, the angle he had on that fight. Like, you know? BDD shouldn't be tanking it, though. <laughs> that is one thing. Has taken a little bit of damage, doesn't care, finds Honor, gets on in, the combo's there, Vicarious stands in front, but Honor is dead. Down he will go. Now the front line, a cast. massive cast again! Zayas is on the backside, he's alone, and he will be taken down. KT, they find the angle once again. Once again, BDD, the one to set it up, the one to lead the charge, the confidence to go into the Skarna, and now KT gonna move back to the Baron. A lot of sustain between these champs, so the low health bar is not too much of a concern. No jungler, but T1 gonna try and contest. Uh, Barrel is looking, I think, for a back, not gonna be able to have the time. Does have TP available, but crucially, it's only damage. There's no jungler here, and it looks like T1 not gonna be able to make it through. KT, they want to bring this to a game number five. I will, yeah, I will, chill out, Mao. I will yeah, relax. Come on. It's a big game. I will watch game five. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You guys take it away. Dude, Spaguma is super low, so. That's tower. And nice. maybe even could push for a tier two here. Yeah. Like, Guma has to reset. They don't really have the wave clear. The next wave is coming up soon. It's a very nice call from Def. Just understanding the cooldowns. Uh, they do have a cannon here as well, and there's really no way to clear that out. Okay, finally, owner's going to get a rock in, but there's another one that comes in with another cannon wave. Uh, but they're not going to overstay. They're going to wait and get some backs in because there is a Cloud Drake coming up in 40. T1 with three, but definitely get a decent amount of value from that Baron. He's still the ones firmly in control. I've calmed down. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm Welcome ready. back, Chronicle. Yeah, I'm ready, uh, ready to continue. Want a highlight as well. No calming down. Faker, he's caught. He's up against the wall. The knockout comes in, but BDD's out of there very quickly. Um, it will take a while to go down, and finally they do get them, him, rather, as the flash Yoshi. underneath the turret, Pilsic going deep, as now Honor trying desperately to get that finish off, but he will not be able to. Outcome 41. Take a look at this fight, and once again, Karia, this time he's going to be the target, and down he goes, just like that, right as the Baron spawns, and they, they say, have okay. eyes on the, uh, the help. No flash on Owner, he can get over the wall, but it does make it more difficult, especially with BDD setting up those Q3s. Barrel and Perfect also should be looking to play. Uh, they don't know. Oh! He's in the pit and it goes to Pilsic anyway. Oh, that was looking so disastrous, but Pilsic quick on to the trigger and he gets that one down. Zeus is in here as well. And uh, well, he's he's not very long for this one. His BDD is also coming on over. Barrel gets over the wall. Zeus gets denied from jumping over the wall, and KT have Baron. A lot of the players on this team have been known to make some magic happen, and we are about to go to silver scrapes in this telecom war. Got to maintain the pressure there up against T1, forcing Looking them back. like they don't have too many chances uh, to get back to this. got a fight, they're trying to get Pyoshik here, but he is just so tanky. Do they have the damage? The knockup comes in, the cast to save his life. And now we're kiting out KT though. Owner gets in, Jax gets in. They're looking for Death. Death's in a bit of trouble, but the clutch comes in. He's okay. DDD! DDD gets into that back line and decimates the rest of T1. Karyo will be taken down. And we are going to Silver Scrapes 100%. T1 trying to deny it with a pick on Yoshik, but BDD does not miss on this Yone. Gets the ult, gets both carries. I'm gonna go to a game five. The defending world champions are going to be pushed to the brink. The Nexus surely to fall. No one standing for T1. <laughs> and there it is, the alpaca tree and stuff. Just on it goes over to BDD potentially, but they might want the AP. Oh. So oh. some other options. Oh, the, the confidence pick. And the thing with the Blanc is... I, I so do actually really like the T1 composition. There is so much long-range engage as... Level 1 hook shot coming on in. Do a little bit of harass coming in there, but Karia is here. Trade a little bit back on a perfect. And actually a decent amount more than just a little bit. I mean, Ignite coming down here as well. Karia really bullying both of them in the mid lane, just really using the shield to oh, daybreak. Faker backing for Tyr and a very early piece of magic resist. It's perfect. Has ult. 
on Vision was the Sejuani, but yeah, as you mentioned, you're not getting away from this one. Zayu's trying his best. He's gonna flash. He's gonna try to ult away, but you cannot get away from the Camille. Do they have the damage to take down Zayus? Is the real question as one will do it, and they take him down. Persuade and you from having an impact later on. Oh man, everybody is here. They knew. <laughs> <laughs> Both the AD carries still here. It really just comes down to the smite and it goes over to owner and now Barrel's gonna go in looking for something extra. That's two people that are gonna be slept up, but BDD finds Baker trying to bait Zeus in as well, and that's a massive bullet time, but in goes Zeus, finds BDD. The first one to go down will be owner, and now we've got Zeus caught in the pit amongst four of them. It's gonna dash away as Guma finally makes his way over. Carrier gonna be caught by BDD as well, and KT. Okay, but how much of that was Sweet. a joke, fell this? Actually, Atlas it's never, never doubted Barrel. Atlas. Um, now we got Zayus, very similar spot. This time it's in the bottom lane. He gets the ult off, and it's really good timing right when the permafrost comes in as well, so the damage not quite there. Meanwhile, a Jin ult in the top side. Yeah, good flash coming out from Zayus there to avoid the Sejuani ult. You can see the setup there, but they're doing a decent job of navigating that. Carrier now here to threaten. Needs to be the one that gets the ball rolling for KT. If it has a lead, the difference is massive now. Oh, ult on Perfect. A lot of damage going down into this turret. Yeah, I mean, Perfect's just going to stick around. He's trying to get that kill, and now we got a TP coming in. And here comes BDD behind them all as Garia is going to find the LeBlanc and give them some time. Damage is done, though, to Zayus. Oh, yeah, it goes Perfect. He will live. And BDD is still here. He's looking for more. He wants more. And he's not going to have it. He's going to dash away. Pilsik as well does his job. Just puts positive trade as Perfect. He is no longer afraid. <laughs> he, uh, maybe he should be. Maybe a little afraid. Of yeah. Him. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I mean, there was a chance, but with Pilsik not there, I mean, you don't really have to send it in. By Mercs. You see T1 trying to make an aggressive play here, but there's a lot of KT members in return. <laughs> Barrel just trying to throw himself into it and bait them into this fight as Ingo's perfect, keeps Zeus around, but he dodges. That's it, Duani ultimate lines up too. He's still alive, but down he goes. Trade of top laners as now BDD is coming up. Trying to punish Carrier here, and it looks like T1 are just going to let it go. That's another kill over to BDD's LeBlanc. He is now 3-0. and zero. Running! A lot of running. And they'll take that trade any day of the week. BDD huh? going to try and pressure here, but is he okay? I mean, the chains are going to land, and now he's barely going to stay alive. He's fine. He's got like, you know, 80 he can Do whatever she wants and deal effective true damage to everyone that is within her range is a really big deal. And the other person is also getting the gold. Oh, oh. Uh, well, we're ulting the wave as in he goes, trying to clear it out and make sure that he's safe on the dive. There's the Q3, trying to dodge it, flashes away from Pyoshik. Pyoshik's taking a huge amount of damage, but in comes Dev to try to trade it back and they will get the kill. But man, Zeus made it pretty difficult as once again, Baker's just taking a turret amongst all the action. Yeah, but again. 15 tower hits tank there feels like by Pyoshik, but T1 are just playing for the objectives and it's working. All right, well, this is a Lilia. Can they actually get him down? Nice catch by Barrel Owner in a lot of trouble. Just going to accept his fate and just try to hit the turret, I suppose. Does a little bit of damage, but death will be fed over a kill. Working somewhat, we'll say. Um, sure. Yeah, like you were fine on the crossbow. Again, T1 is 2k gold up. Despite everything that's happened, just because they've been able to get Infernal so many waves. Oh, okay. Devault okay. says once again, Faker's hitting a turret. That was really nice, like Pyoshik and Barrel to interrupt carry. Oh my, that, that's yeah. a lot of damage. He, he has to rise get away for now, and he has Flash. Can he get out is really the question. They'd have to go very deep to try to get Faker at this point. He's damaging a fight when BDD is around, though. Because BDD does, does the same amount of burst, but in a, a very short time frame. Uh, we're ulting a Sejuani in the jungle and now tps are coming in they're trying to keep him around for a very long period at least Turn. but uh yes yeah, was gonna have to unbound out of that one and kt thinking about it thinking about the engage barrel gonna go in the big mf ultimate is just gonna get the flash and it's not too committal just yet owner only gonna hit the front line there's the sleep it goes in onto the one oh! the ultimate catches three but immediately he goes, goes back. back perfect he followed and that might be the end of him, as KT are in a lot of trouble. Ingo's owner looking for a bit more. Barrel is caught out. Down will go BDD. T1, they find the angle in the fight, and Death gets roped into it as well. And Pioshik, the only one to get out here. As it turns out, it was just needing the One to be an engaged. Off of the sleep of owner, get some multi-man engaged. That's Nash.
That's another inner on that. Oh, Bioshik. I mean, I there, is, no there is no vision. Smite. Yeah, he doesn't have smite. There's no way. Oh, they're going to send him away anyway, just in case. That's the Baron over to T1. And the rest of it is just clean up. Zeus <laughs> lines it up. And but it's still going down and kills, but 7,000 gold lead. KT know how much, how rough the game feels right now. And with that tower being taken against the might and money of T1, I don't know. That's going to help a little bit. Trying to catch Barrel. They really want to get him to use his ult. And now we got a potential sleep coming in here as there goes in Carrier looking for a bit more. Oh! It's by Kuma! And that might just do it. It's two kills to the Jin. And look at this. BDD's going to go down as well. It's three kills just like that. And Faker once more. But already it is such a huge win to the side of T1 as they look to group in mid. Things are coming in. They do have the Misfortune Ultimate to clear the wave. But T1 might try and interrupt, might try and just look for the pressure, look for the end here. If you can like it, I mean, KT, they already lost three members. What can they do? 10 seconds on barrel. Is that going to be enough? Perfect. He goes in trying to stall, but the Nexus turrets are falling. They can't get the angle. They're just trying to do it. T1, they want to go to Worlds. Will they be able to? All they got to do is take down the Nexus, and they will get the job. These were the best highlights from today's LCK matchup. Click that subscribe button faster than Ramus can say, okay. See you on the next one.